So about myself, uh, so I'm uh, Katika Palakrishnan. Uh, I'm working as a senior tech lead with MST Solutions. So I've been into this industry for the past 10 years. So I have exposure and experience working with the sales service and marketing cloud. And I have vast experience working with uh, healthcare, manufacturing and e-commerce domain. So that is all about me. And about the, this is the agenda for today. So we'll be looking into uh, what an integration is, uh, its different approaches, uh, scenarios, and uh, the key uh, topic of this session is uh, Salesforce integration patterns. So we'll be going over different uh, integration patterns and then a quick preview about what is a middleware and then uh, followed which we will be taking questions and answering them. So feel free to stop me uh, wherever, whenever when uh, you have any questions with any of the contents that I've been discussing. So getting started with uh, integration. So I'm sure uh, most of you are very familiar with this term integration. So what is an integration and uh, why we need it in the first place? So in simple terms, uh, an integration can be defined as the process of uh, connecting two systems. So thereby letting them exchange information. So integration will not just uh, let the systems exchange data, but also it will let the system to utilize the process that is built in an another system. So in real time uh, for any business, so there will not be just one application that will let them do everything. So consider an uh, e-commerce application. So there are a lot of uh, e-commerce applications that we are using, right? Like Flipkart and Amazon. So for customers like us, uh, it may look like an online platform to sell products. So it may look like uh, the application itself is pulling data uh, and images from different tables from one database and uh, rendering it in different pages. Uh, but originally, what we are seeing is just one of the interfaces that the business uses to sell their products to customers. So the inventories that we are seeing in the different pages, uh, they, they may come from one application uh, where they maintain their uh, product information. So upon when you try to select an item and try to check out, so you will be required to do this product, uh, the tax and shipping calculation, right? So all of these could be done by a different application. So followed which uh, will have, will do the online payment. Uh, so which will be facilitated by a uh, different applications. So once a customer buys a product, right? So the data will again go into numerous applications for uh, different, different processing. Uh, say uh, in terms of Salesforce. So it may come into Salesforce for the customer relationship management. So the same, the order data, can, it can go to an ERP uh, where they wanted to keep track of their uh, inventory. So this is the ideal scenario. So that I thought of uh, maybe bringing up in the session to give you an example about integration. So as you've noticed, so it may look like uh, these applications are managing redundant data. So, but in reality, so each of them will be separate in its role. Uh, it is with the help of this business process, they'll be uh, business process integration. They'll be able to interact with the data that is living in an other system. So you don't have to necessarily replicate the data everywhere when you have a strong integration in place. So when integrating, right? So in terms of a business, so it will give them a, a holistic view of their whole data. So they just don't have to go on to each system to look into their data. So when integrated, it will bring them a 360 degree view of the data that is living in their uh, heterogeneous applications. So that is the major advantages of uh, using integration in today's business. Now let's uh, quickly look into the different integration approaches. So not just in Salesforce. So if you take any kind of uh, integrations with any other technologies too, so the approaches will be basically with one of these three kinds. So starting from uh, data integration, uh, process integration, and uh, virtual integration. So as you are aware, so the most familiar or most frequently used uh, type of integration approaches is uh, data integration. So where we will uh, have create process to synchronize data between one or more systems. So in terms of uh, process integration, uh, so it's like leveraging the business process in one application to complete a task. Say that you have built one uh, tedious business process in one application. 
and now you got to know that an another uh, this application of that business is also requiring that process you don't have to take all of these and try to rebuild it in the other application so instead uh, when you integrate you will just be able to use make use of this process living in the other system by just sending the data completing the task there and getting back the results and store it in the originating machine so this is one way of integration so the third one is the virtual integration so where uh, so analytics is very very popular these days right so when you wanted to run kind of some kind of analytics over the data that is living in the external system so here the need is to not bring the external data into salesforce where you are performing all of these operations you just wanted to have a preview of it or you are just going to make some key decisions based on the uh, numerics that are available in that external data so in this case a virtual integration will be a best uh, type of integration where you will have the ability to just view search and modify the data that is living in the external system so this is one kind of approach so either way so your integration will be under one of these three approaches only so in upcoming slides we'll be looking into uh, each of these in very detailed way starting uh, with the integration scenarios now that we have seen the different approaches now let's see some common integration scenarios so this is quite ideal right so either you will be required to expose the data in salesforce to an external system or you will be required to bring that data that is living in an external system to salesforce or else you will be referencing like uh, what we have seen in the virtual integration virtualization right so you will be just referencing the data inside salesforce you don't referally you don't uh, necessarily bring the data in but you will just refer the data uh, in, inside uh, the external data inside salesforce and the other one is uh, transform or enriching your salesforce data with the help of a business process uh, that may be living in the other system so these are all some common scenarios so now with the integration patterns right so we'll be looking into in detail about how each of uh, each of these business uh, integ salesforce integration patterns will solve all these integration scenarios so any questions till now okay so if not i'll go ahead with the integration patterns so these uh, these are all the different integration patterns that uh, salesforce has released so these integration patterns are not just limited to the scenarios that we have previously seen so every business has their own integration scenario so there will be some common requirements and issues that the developer need to consider so these patterns and practices are released by salesforce based on those common integration scenarios so starting from the first pattern is uh, remote process invocation request and reply so in this kind of pattern so the salesforce will invoke a process in the external system and waits for its completion to track the response so there will be so this is an ideal case right say in terms of uh, when you will be required to calculate a shipping rate right so you will be sending a request to the external system and it will process the results uh, that you are process the data you are sending in and it will generate the results and it will give you back so this is one kind of integration uh, pattern so the other pattern is fire and forget so this is again uh, where you are uh, inter this is similar to the previous pattern so except that salesforce invokes a process in the external system and it doesn't wait for its completion so the remote system may acknowledge the request after processing it you don't have to happen in the same time so it may take some time to process the request and it will send back the result based so in this case uh, the target uh, the originating system will be required to keep sending request to, to check the status of that external system so this is one another pattern under salesforce integration pattern so the third one is uh, batch data synchronization so this pattern is uh, primarily suggested for uh, synchronizing data between two systems so this is an optimal solution uh, when the data has to be synchronized asynchronously without any user intervention so as you can see batch uh, so we will go to batch when there is no user intervention is required right so this batch based data synchronization is bi-directional which means so it has the ability to sync the data from external system to salesforce and uh, vice versa from salesforce to external system 
So the fourth pattern is uh, the common pattern, the remote calling. Uh, so in this pattern, it is the external system uh, that wants either the data or process that is living in the Salesforce. So in such cases, the remote system will perform a call into the uh, into to read uh, existing data in Salesforce to create new records in Salesforce or uh, modify or delete the existing record uh, via any business process. So the fifth one is UI based on the uh, data changes. So with this uh, pattern, uh, Salesforce users uh, interface will be automatically refreshed uh, with the latest data. Uh, so because uh, when the in interface is relied, now that we have the ability to develop applications in uh, using Lightning Web Component and Lightning Aura development, so we, we can build some interactive consoles. But when there is a need to update the data changes here in the interface, whenever it changes in the external end. So that this is one way of integration. So where Salesforce will listen to the data changes in the external system, and it will opt, uh, automatically update the user, face, uh, user interface uh, inside Salesforce with the data changes. And the last one is the data virtualization. So with this pattern, again, so one will be able to manipulate the data that is living in the external system uh, without necessarily importing it inside Salesforce. So these are all the different integration patterns, which covers the common integration scenarios, which gives you the uh, best fit and optimal or suboptimal solutions for each of the scenarios that we have in our day-to-day uh, -day work. So now we will be going into each of these integration patterns in detail, and we'll be, uh, with the help of an example, we'll be try investigating this approach and the different solutions for each of these approaches. So before we start uh, into each of these process, uh, do we have any questions from anyone? Are you here? Yes, I can hear you. So uh, you told that we have some few uh, integration patterns, right? So I know about uh, if we if we want to pass any uh, even from other application to Salesforce, we have an option called webhook, right? Yeah. So what, so if you're connecting in that way, which which pattern will it come under? Webhooks maybe it will come under. Uh... UI based data changes because sometimes we aren't directly using webhooks. Uh, ETL maybe or uh, middleware will do the same in this way. So the pattern covers uh, instead of webhooks directly. So it will cover an ETL way and uh, uh, middleware way. So in some of these approaches, say in UI based data changes, right? So those are one options which you can also parallelly match to webhook integrations as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So now let's go ahead and start with the remote process invocation uh, request and reply. So here, uh, as I have said earlier, Salesforce invokes a process in the external system, wait for its completion, and track the response. So this is an ideal scenario that requires a synchronous update back to Salesforce that it will happen in the same transaction. So consider an example that uh, you are required. So this is the same example that we have discussed earlier uh, about calculating shipping uh, rates for a backend orders. So there will be a quick action in the order detail page that lets the salespeople to calculate the shipping or the tax and apply it to the particular order. So the request will be sent from Salesforce to the shipping service, and the response will be updated back in Salesforce immediately. So this is one ideal scenario that you can relate to a request and reply pattern. Uh, now let's go ahead and see the different ways to solve this particular scenario, so starting from enhanced external service. So enhanced external service is a declarative approach uh, to connect an external REST API using open uh, API standards. So when I say this is a declarative approach, so this is an out of the box option that is available in Salesforce that will let administrators and developers to connect to an external API, either with no or less code. So with the declarative tools, uh, with the options available out of the box, you will be able to uh, import the API specification into Salesforce and make them available as invocable actions. 
So now that it is available in invocable actions, it's quite obvious, right, for us to invoke it from a flow or an Apex. So this option is, at this point, is available only for RESTful services. Only if your target uh, system is of RESTful services, you can make use of this out-of-the-box enhanced external service in Salesforce. So the other option is uh, initiating a call, synchronous callout uh, from a Lightning component or a Visual Force page. So this is, again, a normal process. Uh, so if it is a REST endpoint, you can use the standard get, post, and delete method to interact with that service. If it's a SOAP endpoint, you just have to uh, generate a Apex class consuming that proxy and uh, use it to connect to the remote service. So while capturing all of these solutions, right? so Salesforce even tagged the best and optimal approaches. So when Salesforce has listed uh, these as the solution for this particular approach, it has tagged each of them as an optimal uh, best approach or suboptimal. So in this case, the first two approaches are tagged as the best approaches or the best solution for this kind of implementation, whereas the other two are uh, tagged as either optimal or suboptimal. Uh, so only when the first two doesn't work out, right? So the user can consider the other two options, like a trigger. So a trigger, as you may aware, so it is an asynchronous way of updating the data. Uh, but still, if these two are an op not an option for you, then obviously you can consider having a trigger uh, that will solve the uh, integration need of you. So the Salesforce has tagged uh, tagged this as a suboptimal solution, which means so this may not be the best fit again. So, but you can still use this approach to solve your use case. And finally, it's the batch Apex. So everywhere uh, when we come across this Apex term, right? So it will be the same processing for REST and SOAP, except that the context of execution is different. So from batch context, again, it is a suboptimal sub solution because uh, batch has its own limitations, right? To perform call-outs. So governor limit is one consideration for this approach. But otherwise, uh, you will be able to achieve the solution for this uh, particular use case with this way of uh, uh, solution as well, with the help of a batch Apex job as well. These are all the different solutions we have for this first approach for the uh, reply, for the request and reply approach. So the next pattern is. Uh, uh, Kritika, sorry to uh, interrupt, just a quick question there. Yeah, I could go back to the previous slide, Pradeep here. So the third point about uh, you know, trigger that's invoked from Salesforce uh, invokes an asynchronous callout. Uh, yeah. In that case, then how will it fit under the request and response or reply pattern? Because asynchronous is executed in a separate thread, right? So we are not waiting for the response. Yeah, again, so that's the that's the problem. So this is not an asynchronous way of updating. Again, uh, the reason for listing or listing it out here is so when your business use case is uh not uh it's not suitable for the first two approaches when you think mm -hmm. that you cannot uh, or you cannot initiate that request from any of these two approaches this is the worst case this is not a recommended approach to that's where uh, even salesforce has tagged it as a suboptimal uh solution so only mm -hmm. when because anyhow you're raising synchronous thread to uh when it uh requests uh uh, endpoint that has the tendency to respond back immediately so it has the tendency to update back into the database except that it will not happen in the same transaction right so that is where uh, th these two right so these two both will come under as a suboptimal solution they are not recommended best fit so only the first two you can consider as the best fit solution for this kind of uh, scenario but it doesn't mean that you cannot or should not uh, make use of the other two approaches so these are recommended only you, when you think that you cannot do it with the first two. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, the other one now we are going to see is the remote process invocation, fire and forget. So in this case, uh, Salesforce calls the remote system, but it doesn't wait for a response. So in this approach, either the external system will update the Salesforce with a result or the Salesforce will uh, request the remote system for an update. Or in a simple case, uh, Salesforce may try to create a record in the external system and wants to synchronize the external system's unique identifier back into Salesforce. So this can be one ideal scenario of fire and forget. Let's see a quick example. Uh, consider that um, 
uh, you are working for a healthcare provider, so where they wanted to send the clinical information as a fax to an external system. And as Salesforce doesn't have the capability uh, out of the box to generate a fax, it is making use of a third party tool. So Salesforce is required to send data to this third party tool, which has the ability to generate a fax. And uh, you are in need of uh, aggregating all your data or merging all the data that you have sent uh, to into a unique format. So this uh, third party tool, it will take some time to perform all of these to create a unique format based on the multiple uh, data that is sent to it. So obvious, it is quite obvious for it to send the result, for it to not send the result immediately. But it can just acknowledge the Salesforce about that uh, it has received the request. So maybe the Salesforce, with the reference to the details that it has received from the acknowledgement, Salesforce may be required to check back the status to this external uh, third party tool about the status of the facts that is sent. So this is one kind of example for this approach. Now let's go ahead and see the different ways to solve this particular uh, use case or this or any of the use cases under this pattern. So starting from uh, platform events. So platform events uh, is based on the event-driven architecture, so which enables apps to communicate uh, inside and outside of Salesforce. So not just inside Salesforce. Platform events has the ability to even interact with the services that are outside Salesforce. So it, it is based on the pub, it works based on the publish subscribe uh, model, and uh, it works directly with an image uh, message bus. So Salesforce can uh, send and listen to the updates that is posted to this message bus. So with the platform events, the solution can either be process driven or uh, customization driven. So in case of customization driven, the updates will be posted by an Apex. So either this event can be initiated from a trigger based on the data changes. And uh, Salesforce, on the other way, Salesforce will be able to uh, receive the updates posted to this channel uh, based on its subscription. Again, so this works on the subscription basis, right? So when it is subscribed, so it can listen to the changes that is happening in that particular channel, and it can update back that uh, data inside Salesforce. This is one way of uh, solving this particular uh, use case with the help of uh, a platform events or uh, either process driven or customization driven both the ways without of uh, outbound messaging so this is at another approach where uh, salesforce can send the data to external system as soap messages so in this case uh, salesforce can send the unique uh, session id part of that uh, outbound message so the external system uh, uh, again so for performing the callback they don't have to separate uh, so do a callback uh, separate in order to authenticate so it can make use of that unique session id to update the data back in salesforce so so this is one way of uh, solving it with the uh, outbound messaging so the other approaches are uh, uh, quite common the user initiated uh, actions from a custom lightning component or a visual force page so that again performs a soap or https uh, callout and this is in a, since this is an asynchronous way of updating so again so you can consider a trigger or batch performing an apex or https uh, asynchronous call out as a best fit solutions too so unlike the previous approach where uh, this has been a uh, not recommended way but since uh, anyhow we are going to get the results in an asynchronous way you can consider this as one of the best way of solving this particular use case either the trigger approach or the batch performing a soap or https call out so any questions with this approach Uh, sorry, just a quick one about the outbound messaging. It is what we have on the workflows, right? I mean, which is not really much used uh, uh, right now. Yeah. OK, yeah, it's the are. same one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the same one. Yeah. OK, thank you. And some considerations uh, with this approach, actually, uh, you need to ensure. So when you are required to work on such kind of integrations, right? So what are all the questions? Or what are all the few things that you need to keep in mind about the external system that you're working with? So it is about the item potency of your uh, remote system. So what does item potency mean? So it is the ability of your external system to send back uh, same and accurate results, even when it is invoked many a times. Because 
since with this pattern, so we will not be waiting for the response from the external system. So it is quite obvious for us to keep sending requests to the external system requesting the status. So if item potency is not implemented in the external system, so it may send back different results every time. Say in case of a transactional request, right? So without item potency, so it may treat every request as a new request and create duplicate entries, or it may give you back inappropriate results. So this is very critical for this pattern. So every time when you are required to work on this kind of pattern, so the one question that you need to ask for or you need to keep in mind is about the item potency of that remote system. And again, the state management. So state management is also very crucial. So where uh, you will be required to uh, store the external systems or the remote systems primary identification with you. And the remote system will be required to so store Salesforce's unique ID. So that way it will always say, give you uh, correct and uh, appropriate results. And uh, in this case, you will be able to uh, perform a composite requests too, so where you will be able to aggregate uh, multiple calls uh, by chaining their uh, response to as an input for the next integration call. So that way you can maintain the transactional integrity. You don't have to perform multiple call-ups. You can make it as a composite request. So these are all some of the recommendations or considerations for this particular approach. So moving on to batch synchronization. So this pattern is applicable for the cases when the data is required to uh, update to be updated to and from the uh, Salesforce with the external system. So the data in this case uh, will be updated on a scheduled basis. As you can see, it is a batch data synchronization. So one example is, uh, so in case of uh, e-commerce industry, where they wanted to uh, import uh, the newer inventories uh, pricing uh, from an ERP into Salesforce on a daily basis, either the inventory data or the price data, if they wanted to uh, keep both the environments in sync. So this could be one of the solutions for them. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at the different solutions. So as I've mentioned earlier, uh, so this is a bi-directional update, uh, which means so you will be required to update the data from Salesforce to an external system and sync the data from external system to Salesforce. So these are all uh, some of the solutions that are available. So starting from change data capture. So CDC is at again a streaming product in Lightning platform. Uh, that will enable us to efficiently integrate data with the external system. So instead of uh, doing a periodic polling, right, whether the data is changed or not, with the CDC, so we'll be able to publish the changes as and when the record gets updated. So when you uh, when you see the data gets updated in your Salesforce, you can keep this, you can publish your changes from Salesforce. So the same way, so when the changes happens in the system, you will, and that gets posted to, CDC, so you'll be able to listen to the changes and you'll be able to uh, perform the update in the inside Salesforce. Too. So this is one way where there is no need to replicate the data in uh, in other system. So with the simple integration, you will be able to synchronize data between both the places. And for the same scenario, we can use of uh, make use of a third party ETL tool. So ETL tools like uh, Jitterbit, so they have the ability to run CDC on both Salesforce and in the external data. So a lot of your manual work will be reduced uh, in terms of uh, ETL. So you can consider this for complex integrations. So in, in the solution, uh, Salesforce is the data source and uh, you can use the time and status information of your individual uh, query, uh, individual rows to query the data and filter the target result set because you are going to synchronize data from Salesforce to an external system. So this can be implemented either using uh, SOQL in combination with SOAP API or uh, SOAP API in combination with the uh, get updated method. So these are all some ways to perform this uh, replication via third party tool. And the other one is the remote process uh, invocation. So this is not a recommended approach Actually, it's not a best fit solution, but still, if any of the previous approaches are not working out for the business, you can do a remote call in to get the update to data. So there are, again, considerations with this approach. It's basically the governor limit and uh, resource consumption. So this will require very efficient uh, 
exception handling. So these are all the some ways where you can uh, keep your data in sync with the uh, you where you can synchronize the data in Salesforce to external system. And the other now let's look at the other way around. So this time your source system is going to be the remote system. So you will be required to synchronize the data that is living in the external system into Salesforce. So in this case again. A uh, third-party ETL tool will be a best option to consider. So as this has the ability to run CDC in the external system. So this ETL tool will then invoke a bulk API to perform DMLs in the Salesforce system. So this ETL tool will listen to the changes in your external system. And it has the ability to invoke your Salesforce bulk API and perform DMLs there. Again, this will reduce a lot of custom effort that we do. And it is recommended for uh, complex integrations. Uh, the other option is remote calling. So this approach this time, it will we are letting in the external system to perform a REST or SOAP API call to Salesforce to update its data. So this needs to be implemented with the proper planning to ensure uh, continuous or uh, data update loop is not happening in Salesforce. So these are all the uh, different approaches to synchronize uh, data from Salesforce to external system and from external system to Salesforce. Any questions with this approach? This is not uh, one another thing that I wanted to highlight is this is meant for uh, bulk processing of data, not for the normals. Because the normal thing, we can have other options. We don't have to go to the extent of making use of an ETL. Since it's processing bulk data, so that is where we could see all these third-party ETL tool recommendations here. So I'm moving ahead with the next integration pattern, which is remote call-in. So this is as so some of these informations, it's like redundant. So the remote call-in again. Uh, we have seen it as one solution for different uh, approaches in the past, but this is also available as one uh, integration pattern exclusively. So which is to allow the external system to read, create, update, and delete data that is living in Salesforce. Uh, one example is uh, in manufacturing industry. So they are using, consider that they are using a revenue management application. So, and they wanted to keep track of their accounting, uh, sales and marketing data. Uh, they wanted to keep it in sync with Salesforce between their revenue management and uh, Salesforce. They wanted to perform a remote call in to Salesforce to ensure that they have the right data in both the places. This could be one ideal scenario that you can think for a uh, remote call in pattern. Now let's go ahead and uh, see the different solutions. So uh, again, so as we have seen earlier, so these are all some of the common uh, solutions uh, that are available, like starting from SOAP API, so where you will be able to generate a vista and uh, share it to your external system, where they will either making use of that uh, vista, they can either do a bulk processing or else they can publish an event via that SOAP API. So that way they can uh, create or manipulate the data living in Salesforce. So when we have SOAP, we have the similar options with the rest to do. Uh, so with the rest, so you'll be able to rest as the advantages of performing composite uh, uh, resourcing. So you'll be able to chain multiple requests into a single API call and perform many operations in a single call. And uh, so again, web, uh, Apex Web Services, which is similar to SOAP, except that you will have some uh, custom methods that can be exposed as web services to your external application. So the same way for Apex REST. And you have this bulk APIs too, so which works primarily on REST principles, so which helps you to process bulk. So all other places you can do it for a normal processing of records. Whereas uh, with remote call-in, if you see a need for bulk processing, bulk API will be the best option to consider to let the external system manipulate the data living in Salesforce. These are all some of the solutions under this pattern. Any questions until here? Uh, Krithika, one question about the other, I mean, the previous one only, where we talked about uh, for bulk data. Yeah. Uh, we, CDC, we're talking about it, but CDC will still act upon like one record or something like whenever a change yeah. happens. 
so the previous approach right so correct. this is uh, for batch uh, data synchronization batch data, CDC, correct. batch data so either uh, so it can actually uh, based on the delta whereas the in other processes right uh, you don't have to uh in uh, try to you don't have to try to synchronize everything from both the places mm -hmm. only based on the change in data whether it is few or more okay so again it is going to be multiple messages that are getting posted into your channel but this is also one uh best way because if we keep polling the system to look for the change in data that that itself becomes an expensive operation right so whereas in cdc mm -hmm. you don't have to do that so as and when there is a change, so it will automatically going to publish the changes. Correct. But uh, only thing is that it is not really operating on a batch of data. Right? Yes, that's, yeah, that's what I'm trying right. to understand. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, it, 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 it won't perform in a bulk way in a batch processing. So as and when a data is changed, yeah. it will be Immediately sending. It will, right. Yeah, it, it will be posting multiple updates to that particular. Correct. So it might channel. be uh, really acting on your, we, we, we are dealing with like even single record at a time. Like yeah. CDC, yeah, as soon as a change is done, it captures and it, it fires the uh, CDC event. Yeah. Like, so the scenario here is we wanted to uh, synchronize the data. We are not correct. like acting on it virtually. We really need this data in both the places. And we want them correct. to be synchronized all the time. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yeah. So now that we have seen uh, remote call-in, now let's go ahead and see the UAE uh, update-based data changes. So this pattern is applicable when there is a need to update the UI based on the recent changes in data. Again, like in the previous approaches we have seen, right? So we'll be able to use uh, streaming API, uh, streaming products from Salesforce, so which has the capability to listen to the data that is uh, changing in the external system. So with the streaming API, based on specific conditions, we will be able to publish the changes on all the subscribed modules within Salesforce. So this can also be done by uh, an asynchronous way, like uh, by clicking a button from the interface, we can perform an API call out, but that will not be a good solution as we have started building some interactive uh, user interfaces with the Lightning Web Components or Aura. So we have a lot of ways to interact, build interactive components these days. So when there is a need to show the change instantly as and when it changes in the external system, where you will not be required or you will not be wanting your users to perform any actions to get the recent data, like clicking a button or doing something in the interface. So all you are required to do is to bring or reflect the data as and when it changes in the external system. So this is one uh, way of addressing this critical uh, use case. Uh, so the solutions could be a streaming API. So streaming API, like any other uh, streaming products of Salesforce, it works on the pub sub model uh, so you will be either able to uh, send the data within the salesforce tool if you see data changes happening anywhere in the object so you'll be able to post them to this particular channel and when it uh, when your uh, user interface components are subscribed to this particular channel they'll be able to listen to this data changes and they'll be able to refresh their interfaces instantly so it works both the way so within salesforce as well as for the data that is living in the external system right so uh, when your external system has the ability to uh, push their notification to this uh, streaming api channels they'll obviously be able to listen to the data changes and reflect the changes immediately in the interface so this kind of pattern uh, so we'll be able to eliminate the need of sending api request so we don't have to send an api request in this case so as the other tool has the ability to post their data changes and the deltas to the uh, channel. So Salesforce have a streaming product uh, API, you'll be easily able to listen to the data changes and then uh, make the user interface more uh, interactive. So with the uh, push technology, so with uh, called as the publish subscribe model, right? So you'll be able to transform, uh, transform your information in from the server to different clients that are subscribed to the channel you just don't have to so any number of uh, clients can be subscribed to that particular channel so so the that's how the push technology works right so just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview on how this push thing actually works so this is one pattern and one way of solving this 
uh, UI update based on the data changes. This is one pattern of integrating data. Any questions with this particular pattern? So if not, uh, we'll go ahead with the last pattern, which is called uh, data virtualization. So this pattern is applicable in places uh, where the data is not necessarily required to be imported into Salesforce. Uh, without necessarily storing the data in Salesforce, a uh, user will be able to read, manipulate the data that is living in the external system. So consider a scenario uh, where uh, the business uses Salesforce to track leads, uh, create opportunities, and capture order details um, that converts lead to customers. So, so in this case, so Salesforce isn't going to be, uh, isn't the system that is going to process the orders. Orders are managed by an external system. But Salesforce, uh, sales representatives who are using Salesforce, they need to access uh, to the updated information on processing the orders. So without, they, they don't have to, uh, without requiring them to learn on how to use the external system. Say, for example, uh, you have an analytic team in your end, and uh, so they who are very much used to using Salesforce, but they wanted to run some analytics for a set of data that is living in the external system. So in this case, they don't have to learn about how the external system works and try to uh, do this integration. Instead, so with either using Salesforce Connect or request to reply, right? So they'll be able to fetch the data that is living from the in the external system, just giving the preview of the data inside Salesforce. So this is one way of virtualizing your data living in the external system. So with Salesforce Cloud, so it is an app cloud integration service, uh, which enables uh, seamless access to the data that is stored in the external sources. So Salesforce Connect, uh, so it will basically map the data tables in the external system into external objects. So you have external objects in Salesforce, right? So this uh, Salesforce Connect, it has the ability to map the external object into your uh, in the, the data from the external uh, source to external objects in Salesforce, after which you can use that live connection to uh, keep the external data up to date in Salesforce. So this uh, Salesforce Connect, it has the ability to keep your connection live so that way you don't have to perform a, again a data fetch again. So it will always, once the connection is established, it will always ensure that the external data is uh, updating to Salesforce and it is always uh, in real time with uh, uh, the external system. As and when it changes in the external system, you will be able to see a preview of it inside Salesforce itself. Uh, these are all some capabilities of Salesforce Connect. So this has the ability to query your external system so you, you also have the ability to, to create, uh, update, and delete the data that is living in the external system. So in addition to this, as we are bringing them as external objects inside Salesforce, uh, you will be able to uh, access the data via list views. You can see detailed uh, pages. Uh, you can have record feeds like how you have in your uh, standard objects. You can create custom tabs, uh, render page layouts. Uh, you can even establish relationship between uh, your external objects and standard and uh, your uh, custom, your standard and custom objects uh, with external objects. You can enable chatter feeds. Uh, you can run to a uh, limited extent, not to like how you perform or how you create and run reports on standard and custom objects. You may not be able to do that to, to that extent, but still you'll be able to run reports on the external data. And this has also uh, the ability to be available on your mobile apps too. So you'll be able to see a preview of your data that you have connected in your Salesforce mobile app too. So these are all the some options that are available with Salesforce Connect. And uh, moving on to the request and reply. So this is the conventional or the normal way of making a web service call out to the external system. When you see that the Salesforce Connect is not an option for the external system, uh, so this is the suboptimal solution where you can perform a call out and uh, just read the data and render it in the user interface. So you are not necessarily storing it uh, here. Uh, so when you wanted to read, you can perform a read. And when you wanted to update an external system, you will be performing a uh, API call out to the external system, either uh, Salesforce SOAP or uh, REST. You can use it to manipulate the data that is living in the external system. This is about the last approach. Any questions with this approach?
and uh, so they, this approach too has some considerations so this is for small volume so you cannot uh, this virtualization cannot be done on a large volume of data Hello. sorry yeah tableau crm works on the last uh, last pattern yeah, yeah yeah you're right yeah thanks so when you have a larger uh, record processing or bulk processing, this approach is not recommended. So again, so uh, this is one consideration. So again, users will be able to perform a federated search on the connected system. So federated search in the sense like how you do a global search inside Salesforce, you can perform a federated search for the data that is living in your external system. So this is also possible with the help of an external object or a Salesforce Connect. And it is common for Salesforce Connect uh, to query the external data to have a large volume of data. So it has that uh, ability, but uh, so it it will have impact on the uh, paging behavior that we have. As in, when we have a lot of data uh, retrieved into Salesforce, it will obviously have the performance concerns. And again, uh, so it will be calculated against uh, making callouts when you try to view a data in an external object like in a page layout or in a requester record page so you can consider that in real time it will salesforce connect will make a call out so because when you see it in the list view it will just be a preview of your data only when you click on a data that will it will perform a call out to an external system and it will try to render everything that you are looking for so this is one consideration that you are need to keep in mind that it is going to consume our, your resources behind the scenes. So this is one consideration for this particular approach when you try to virtualize this data. So looking into all of these considerations, only then you can choose between either of these solutions or any of the other solutions that are available. So this is one way of uh, one integration pattern that is available. So moving on with the uh, middlewares. So now you, if you wonder, so we have a lot of middleware uh, in the markets, right? To integrate uh, data in Salesforce to an external system or uh, from external system to Salesforce, you have a lot of uh, products to do that. Uh, so if it is going to be a straightforward integration, it is obvious for business to choose any of the options that we have previously seen. So we have the uh, out of the box options as well as we have the streaming products to do that we have the uh, custom options like apex or uh, apex soap or apex uh, rest callouts to do that purpose but only when you see a complex integration that is when uh, the ob it is quite uh, recommended to go with any of the middleware so it will easily bridge the gap between the two application and it will provide uh, a way to synchronize data between two systems so it's acts as a layer to for these two systems to communicate and uh, so and also it, in addition to integrating data uh, so as it integrates data uh, as it brings data from multiple places right so this becomes a best place to generate insights for the business so uh, performing insights for the data living in different system in their own system is different than performing it in, in a place where they are uh, integrated uh, for a for a purpose basically and uh, in addition to this middleware has a different other capability a lot of other capabilities too so they don't they just to do the normal uh, crud operations so in addition to that uh, so it has the ability to reprocess your data uh, maybe if you wanted to do any business logic after your data is integrated so this these middlewares has the options to perform any business logic so they will be they has the ability to monitor to the changes that are happening to your data inside salesforce as well as data in the external system and generate notification as and when it changes and if you wanted to perform any business logic as and when your data changes even that has uh, even these middlewares has the capability to do all of these so it depending upon the complexity of your uh, uh, complexity and the budget of that integration so if you see that a middleware is doing all of these, it is quite advisable to go with the middleware. So where it do a seamless integration. So as you can see in this pictorial representation, right? So when you choose to integrate it manually with uh, any of the previous approaches, you will be doing a complex 
integration. But when you wanted that to happen very in a seamless way, and when you wanted to do a lot of other things apart from doing a normal CRUD, you can obviously recommend and go ahead with a middleware. So middleware has a lot more capabilities than what I have listed here. So they have the ability to generate a larger insights too uh, with the data that is uh, integrated from the different systems. They don't necessarily have to be in Salesforce. So these middlewares has the ability to do irrespective of the application's actual uh, domain. So, so it works well with Salesforce and in other ways too. So that is one. So I just thought of giving a uh, oh, quick overview about middlewares too, as we are discussing a lot about the integrations. So that is all about for this session today. So we have seen a lot of, to summarize, we have seen a lot of integration patterns under different, different scenarios. And if you have ever wondered uh, what is a middleware and why we actually need a middleware when we have a lot of these solutions provided by Salesforce itself. So that comes into picture depending upon the complexity of your integrations. Any questions from anyone? Hi, I have a question related to CDC. Yeah. So, bas so basically, uh, we have a uh, platform events and the uh, CDC. So both both are like event based. You can do that. But I just want to understand. Apart from logging, logging the delta capture. So basically, yeah. what we see is, uh, even though if you do a dummy update on a specific record, even even though we do this, uh, those activities, a CDC event is created, right? So yeah. we just want to know. Apart from logging, what are the other uh, use cases that we can utilize CDC? Apart from login, as we have seen here, right? So that is one way of synchronizing data. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe in terms of large volume to data. So when you wanted to identify the delta, right? It is very crucial. So when you wanted to poll and look for the data that has changed recently, maybe if you are doing this for an in an hourly basis, right? Uh, mm -hmm. In case of a large volume to data, if you wanted to look for the delta for that particular R, that's quite mm -hmm. an expensive operation to do. Exactly. So basically, in, why am I, yeah, why I'm asking yeah. is because the platform has some or platform by default gives 25,000 events to publish per day, right? So just yeah. want to check like if you use your CDC in that case, probably would that not, uh, you know, uh, eat up those uh, events that are published events to publish actually. So just wanted to check because if there's any, yeah, limit again, it all depends. Yeah. So again, so the limit obviously provides it all depends on the volume mm -hmm. of data that we can expect to be synchronized on a day to day basis. But again, it is it becomes an optimal solution because uh, it is expensive to identify the deltas in a large pool of data. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how I see it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Thank you everyone for your participation. So this is a quick uh, option or opportunity for you. If you or if you know someone who is looking for a job opportunity in Salesforce or a job change to consider uh, applying for MSD solutions, which is uh, available. So the company has locations in Chennai, Trichy, and even we are offering remote positions for the candidates who has experience with three to eight years. So I request you all to scan this QR code or uh, take a picture of this, uh, take a screenshot of this and share it with your friends and uh, well-knowns. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining this session today. Yeah, thanks, Kithia. Thanks, team. Thanks for joining.